Hi, my name is David Hatton. I'm a developer for IBM Urban Code Deploy. Today we're going to talk about using component templates in Urban Code Deploy. We're going to see how component templates interact with snapshots and just generally how to effectively leverage component templates to make your deployments run better. So we're starting at the dashboard. I'm going to go over to my components page and I'm going to click on templates. So first I want to create a new template. I'm going to call it a name. So this looks kind of bare bones. Uh, it looks somewhat similar to a create new component dialog box, but there's, there's not a whole lot. One thing we can select here is source config type. So we're going to select a Maven, and here you'll see every option that comes with that source config type, but you can set some of them on the component template, and you can set some of these properties on the component. Component template is a generic form of a component that has some of its values set. So in this instance, I might be making a component template that pulls from the same Maven repository, but maybe it pulls different artifact IDs, or it pulls from a different group, or you maybe want to pull as a different user. You would set that, you would control that by setting certain variables here. You wouldn't want to create five different components and have to set the repository URL and group ID on all of them if they all shared a common base. So using component templates, we can effectively leverage spots in our deployments where configuration is going to be the same across several components. So we're going to just insert some, some uh, data here. So, and we're going to leave the rest of this blank for, for demonstration purposes. So now I have a component template. So we have both components and templates, and they're both derived from this component screen. So if I click into the template, it looks similar to a component, except you'll notice that there are slightly fewer options here. There's no versions, for one. So component templates do not have a version inherent to them. Only the components which you create from a component template have versions. So a component template itself is not deployable. A component template itself does not represent any deployable material that you might have. If we go into the configurations, we notice that we can alter what we've set on the template and what's going to be set on the component. And you'll notice uh, similar properties that you'll find on a component. You'll also notice that while component templates don't have versions, they are versioned. Almost every object in IBM Urban Code Deploy is versioned, like this. And we'll get to why versions are important in a second. So one thing that component templates do have is processes. And this is where understanding the similarities in your system is uh, important to determining how you set up your component templates. So if I create a process, And I'm just going to give it some echo steps. So now I have a component template with a process. So let's cut 
a new component from this component template. So I simply click on the Create New Component button, and I get this dialog that looks very similar to the Create Component uh, dialog you'll receive normally. However, much of anything you set on the template is grayed out. You don't have the option to override those variables, those properties. So anything that you don't want to be shared by all child components of your component template need to be need to not be set on the component template. So you set these. So you set these uh, extra variables, and now you have a new component. Here on the component, we can see what template it belongs to. And if we go to the template, we can see all of the components that are a child of this template. If we go into the components configuration, we notice that we don't have the opportunity, the ability to alter these settings. And if we go to the process, we'll see that it has one process inherited from its template. And we'll notice that that process is the process we just created. So I'm going to modify that process, and let's see what happens. So notice that a couple things happened here. The version of the component template has been increased. The version of the process on the component template was increased as well. Where is this relevant? Well, inside of a component, I can lock the version that is associated with this template. So where the component template versioning comes in is if you go to the component, a child components configuration page, we'll notice this template version selection. So negative one means always use latest. And let's say I want to freeze it at a particular version. So I'm freezing this component at its template version 3. So now I'm going to make some modifications to the component template. So now if we go into the template for that component and we look at its configuration, we can set a group ID. So if I set that, again, my template's version has increased, but this component stays on version 3. And if we check, we'll notice that this is not, this retains its prior value and is not grayed out. If I were to create a new component from this template at its current state, I would not be able to specify the group ID on the child component. Now, one thing that is not specifiable is the processes of a component template. So if I create a component from a component template, I will have the most recent process from that component template. 
This is where understanding your deployment scenario and understanding where the similarities lie in its structure is crucial to effectively using component templates. Okay. So by using switch steps, I can create different branches of logic, which means that if I have a deployment scenario with uh, three very similar uh, branches of deployment, maybe uh, though in one component, I'm going to do an extra file replacement step. I can design a component process, a component template process, that will effectively uh, contain my entire component deployment strategy and have the appropriate branching to control that flow depending on uh, certain properties that are set. So depending on the structure of your deployment, you may be able to use a, a single component template for, to, to solve many of your, uh, to solve your entire strategy in one swoop. Um, and then you just create components from that template and um, you know, point them to the correct places in your uh, source repository. So one place where component templating gets a little tricky and where you have to pay attention to versions, which is also what makes this somewhat powerful, is using components that have been cut from a template in a snapshot. So I'm going to go to my JPET store application and create a new snapshot. So I'm going to create a new snapshot with this component template and just to show you how you can control how those two pieces interact. In order to do that, first I'm going to have to add that component that I created to this application because snapshots only know about the components that are in their parent applications. So now when I look on the component template snapshot, I'll see this component version. So here's where I add versions of the component. I have none. I didn't set any up. But the important thing to look at is here. So on the configuration page of the snapshot under advanced settings, you'll notice I have different settings for both components and component templates. So I have both the uh, settings for the component that uh, is a child of a template and I also have the component templates. Now this is where you can control what processes uh, get run in a snapshot. This snapshot will run the latest version, whatever it happens to be, right now it happens to be version three, the latest version of the process in that snapshot. Even if I associate a different component template version with this component, here's where I can control what version of the snapshot of the component templates process gets run. So even though I've set this particular component to use a specific version of its parent template, in here I can set different versions of its properties, but up here I can set which version of the template process that runs. So here's where you can fine-tune and control what, um, what gets run from your component templates and how those get run. It's worth noting that if you have two multiple components uh, cut from a single template, they will share that process. They will always run the same process version. Even if you change it in here, 
you can see you're not changing the process version with respect to any component. You're simply changing the process version. So when thinking about how to use component templates, think about the process because that's what your component template children will be sharing. Thank you for watching. In this video, we went over component templates, how to use components made from component templates, and how to use component templates with snapshots. Good luck with your deployments.